Hey y'all, I am back to finish chapter five because I don't like to leave stones unturned. And um, I'm like, let me just finish this last part and then we can really see how long it's taking. And actually looks like I have about five pages to read from chapter five of Long-Winded Will's book. Daddy-O was caught in the middle. Mama was demanding that he make me go to college. And I was begging him to please understand what I was saying. It was clear that he was going to have the final word. Daddy O was going to be the judge, the jury, and the executioner of the hopes and dreams of either his wife or his son. Daddy O deliberated for about a week. He would take me for a drive, my mom for a walk. He'd ask questions and listen to us talk. In the meantime, Woodcrest was as cold as the ice house. My mother and I were cordial. We kept it on high and by. And then one evening, Daddy-O called us both into the kitchen. My mother and I sat at the table and Daddy-O leaned against the stove. Daddy-O had been here before, except the last time he was sitting in my seat when he was being told by his parents what he could and couldn't do. When he had so loved his camera, but he'd been told it was just a hobby, not a career. At his heart, Daddy-O was an artist who had been robbed of his dreams and his passions because they were unrealistic and impractical. But he also knew firsthand the viciousness of this world against an uneducated Black kid. Everything Daddy-O ever did, somebody had told him he couldn't do it. He was supposed to get a job because there was no way he could start his own business. People told him there was no way white people would work for him. There was no way real supermarkets would buy ice from a black man. He lived against a ferocious headwind of doubt and discouragement, but he did it all anyway. So here's what we're going to do. Daddy O said, you got one year. Your mother said she could get all them schools to hold your acceptance till next September. We're going to help you and support you to do anything you think you need to do to succeed. But in a year, if ain't nothing happening, you're going to go to whichever one of them schools your mother choose. That worked for you. In my mind, a year was forever. I was ecstatic. He turned to Mama. That worked for you? Mama clearly didn't love it, but this was a compromise that kept her dreams alive. She only said one word, yup. And with that, Daddy-O went back to work. My experiences with my father are a mixed bag to say the least, but that night, in the kitchen at 5943 Woodcrest Avenue, he displayed the most exquisite leadership I had ever seen. That was how a father was supposed to be. The leadership theme coming with Leo on the fourth. A few years later, my mother called the Dean at the University of Wisconsin, a school where my application had been accepted. She told the Dean everything. It's terrible, she said. My son wants to take a gap year. He's doing something called rapping. He got a manager and some company is paying him to record an album. It all sounds suspect to me, but we were wondering if you could hold his place until September 87th. The Dean listened patiently. I think that's incredible, Mrs. Smith. What? My mom said. For a young man his age, he would never get that kind of experience here. He should absolutely do it. My mother was floored. And certainly, we'll hold a spot for him. If his album doesn't work out, he can attend next year. That's no problem. I have a, I have doubts that community that conversation took place. I think this is part of his embellishment. A few weeks later, in early May, about a month before my graduation, I was bagging ice at Acrac. In case you were wondering, bagging ice is just as dull and monotonous as it sounds and you always hurt your back. The aluminum scoop held about four pounds of ice, two and a half scoops into a 10 pound bag, which you would then spin to twist the top and then drop it into the time machine and then toss the bag into the shopping cart. If you stacked them correctly, you could get about 24 bags into one shopping cart. Then you roll the cart into the freezer, take the bags out one at a time and stack them. In a four hour session, one person could do 200 to 250 bags. It's repetitive and you just kind of zone out for a few hours while you do it. That's that Mars and Virgo 
and then zoning out, like that would be that Mars and Virgo square and his ascendant. He's just doing it like mechanically and it's just repetitive and this monotony. But again, he's being too detailed with this. Nobody cares about you stacking ice, Will. I always like to do it at night because that's when Power 99 played hip hop. I grew up listening to Power 99 because I grew up in the tri-state area, um, which was Philadelphia, South Jersey, and Delaware. I listened to the Power 9 at 9 countdown, getting lost in my own world and staying up on the new hip hop joints. I would rap along, memorizing my favorite songs and shovel on beat, inventing my own rhymes. But that night I was quiet. For the first time I understood the old saying, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. I had held my ground against my parents and they gave in, but now I had to prove it. Number five, 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 five. We got Cool Mo D's brand new track, Go See the Doctor. I was walking down the street, rocking my beat, clapping my hands and stomping my feet. I saw a little lady so neat and petite. She was so sweet. Yes, I wanted to meet. I mean, I'm as good as Cool Mo D, I thought. No, he wasn't back then. Trying to psych myself up, but my mom had got it into my head. What if she's right? What if a rapper isn't really a thing? And only one year? Is that enough? This last year just blazed on by. Maybe I should go to college. I did do all of this with Jeff while I went to high school. Maybe I could go to college and still do music. Scoop bag, scoop bag, scoop bag. I am not trying to be living at home. I need my own spot, my own money, my own car. Number four, the Beastie Boys are back with, hold it now, hit it. Now I chill real ill when I start to chill. When I fill my pockets with a knot of dollar bills, sipping pints of ale out of the windowsill. When I get my fill, I'm chilly chill. Scoop, bag, scoop, bag, scoop, bag. Man, I'm definitely as good as the Beastie Boys, except they're on the radio and I'm bagging ice. Maybe bagging ice is my destiny. But man, if I'm stuck here with Daddy-O in 10 years, I'm a sever my own head with the dull end of this ice scoop. I mean, Run DMC and Beastie Boys had to have their own version of bugging ice, right? Bagging ice. Or maybe they were flukes, one in a million. Number, number, number three. Check it out, y'all. Hot off the presses from Stutz the Sonic debut album on fire. This is a new one. You guys been asking for it. It's called My Rhyme. But I'm one in a million. Jeff's one in a million. My mom is not my target audience. How she thinks she going to tell if a rapper is good or not? She judging stuff she just don't understand. And what about Melanie? You cannot keep a girlfriend if you running off to some college somewhere. She'll be tossed up with some other joker in two weeks. Scoop, bag, scoop, bag, scoop, bag. And we're back with number two. It's your boys. Old favorite. That's right. Run DMC. My Adidas. This was my jam. It snapped me out of my funk. And I was back to shoveling on beat and rapping along. My Adidas walked through concert doors and roamed all over Coliseum floors. I stepped on stage at Live Aid. All the people gave and the poor got paid. My shoveling picked up pace completely involuntarily. That's the power of hip hop, I thought. My Adidas touched the sand of a foreign land with mic in hand. I cold took command, but my reverie was short-lived. I couldn't get my mind off my mom. I'd failed to protect her from daddy-o. I wasn't brave enough to go with her when she left. And now the hope she had for me, the dreams that had sustained her through all her pain and trouble, I was spitting in the face of that. I couldn't shake the sense that I was failing her again. My Adidas finished playing and Power 99 went to a commercial break. I realized I had missed the end of the song. Damn, I thought, not even my Adidas could pull me out of this one. I rolled the final card into the freezer. I was done for the night. I counted the bags while commercials blared. New mattress sales, everything must go. Maybe I could sell mattresses, I thought. That shit can't be hard. I could do hip hop mattress raps. Get a good night's rest, good sleep routines. Got twins and fools, got kings and queens. 
I threw the shovel on the side, closed the machines up, and we're back with Power 99 at 9 countdown. Tonight, we have a newcomer to the countdown. Shutting off the lights, I realized I couldn't find my keys. I lost my keys a few times before, and Daddy-O had had to come pick me up. I was dreading the thought of having to call him to come get me. Here I am demanding my independence, about to have to call my daddy to pick me up because I can't find my damn keys. The phones have been off the hook all day from y'all wanting to hear these guys. So get ready for our hometown boys. Philly's very own DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. This is Girls Ain't Nothing But. I totally froze. My mouth was hanging open. For some reason, my heart was pounding. I wanted to scream. I wanted to jump, but at the same time, I didn't want to do anything to bump into the universe and knock my record off the radio. Then those words, those words I know so well and have repeated hundreds, maybe thousands of times before, were coming out of the radio. Listen, homeboys, don't mean to bust your bubble, but girls of the world ain't nothing but trouble. It was my voice. That was me on the radio. Me, my rhymes, my voice. I wanted to call people, but I didn't want to miss it. Just last week when I was walking down the street, I observed this lovely lady that I wanted to meet. I ran outside. I wanted to grab somebody and tell somebody, that's me, y'all, that's me. But it was 10 o'clock. Nobody was out there. I started giggling, a knee-jerk reaction that I still have to this day when I find myself in extreme emotional circumstances. I couldn't stop laughing. It was a joyous, blissful laughter. The pure joy of a child waking up on Christmas morning the joy of discovery, of renewed hope, of a new life, the joy of being right about me. And that's chapter five. Hopefully chapter six will have more meat in it. But when looking at his chart, a lot of what chapter five was dealing with was the Mars and Virgo, him droning on with the pointless details. But you are really seeing that Mercury, Venus conjunction and Libra come out. He's all about trying to impress people. And he's all about validation through others, gaining validation through others. And then how he's always, you know, opposing his father on things. That's that Mercury conjunct Venus and Libra opposing that Saturn and Aries him wanting to make these decisions on his own, but then him fearing, you know, retribution or uh, a denial from his father. But then the father basically gave him his graces and now he's on his road to success with Jazzy Jeff, his homie, but perhaps also his homie lover friend, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I was noticing that, you know, uh, Will has Jupiter could join a Pluto with Jupiter ruling that seventh house that deals with his relationships and partnerships, but with the Virgo theme, you know, he's just accustomed to being in a relationship with somebody that he works with. So it could have all started with Jazzy Jeff. Again, if you know what I'm saying. So I'll be back with chapter six very soon. Stay tuned. Peace.